Office, it's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we gonna get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes going to come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> See? It's just like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Rampus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting high. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? Mmm, a coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher. <laughs> a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? Go, that's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now, don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. 
think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas, won't let that secret out. Shh. The barcode. And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No! Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm, and what's inside this one? A mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Francis, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. <laughs> If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. 
If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron in the refrigerator. Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love Fixies. Chocolate. Tom Thomas, unwrap it already. In the morning, Nolik. I really want to see the toy that's inside. Be patient, Nolik. That's all. I'm going to bed. Please don't touch it, okay? And you won't open it without me, right? That's a deal. Oh, no. Good night, Nolik. Uh-huh. you doing in here? Me? Well, I was... Oh, it's a chocolate ball with a toy inside. <gasps> How interesting. Yeah, totally. Let's unwrap it and take a look. We can't. Not until Tom Thomas comes in the morning. But if we're real careful, he won't notice. A chocolate confection. Yeah. A piece of perfection. Uh, uh, Perhaps let oh. give that shining <laughs> Took a look. Tom Thomas won't be happy at all when he finds out you touched a chocolate ball. And you? Like you didn't touch it? I didn't. Oh, then what's that, Nolik? <gasps> chocolate? Absolutely. It's 100% natural milk chocolate. It says so right here. The key ingredient in chocolate is cocoa beans. They are roasted, crushed, and ground. After that, the ground beans are pressed to extract the oil from them. If you mix butter, cocoa, and sugar, you'll get dark chocolate. And if you add some milk to it, then you'll get milk chocolate. Then you just warm it up, pour it into molds, and cool it down. You can add raisins or nuts into chocolate. Sometimes chocolate is even made with flavors like flowers or salt. Chocolate wasn't originally for eating. It was used in a drink made by mixing roasted beans with water and then adding hot peppers. Not every adult could drink it, let alone a child. Today, chocolate is a favorite treat the world over for children and adults alike. How can we put it back together? How about scotch tape? Come on! We'll start by warming up the chocolate so it softens up and then use that to make a new ball. And then to make it hard again... Yeah, we just cool it off. My chocolate confection has got an imperfection. Half of it's gone into thin air. But this is expected when chocolate goes unprotected. First you have got it, then it's not there. Not there. Not there. Tiddish! Done. Let's put in the toy. But we haven't even looked at it yet. Oh, it's so pretty. Tom Thomas is gonna love it. Oh, wait! Oh, what do you think of this idea? I've got a new confection of chocolate perfection. Safe in his wrapper, shining bright. Oh, what perfection! But I can't take off the wrapper without Nolik. You really can't do it without him? I can't. I told Nolik I wouldn't. Mmm, your chocolate is gonna be delicious. Go on, you can eat a little. Hmm, if you say so, I'll eat the chocolate. But we won't open the toy without Nolik. 
Mmm. Good chocolate. Come on, don't you want to know what the toy is? We won't tell. All right, just a peek, and we'll close it right up. What is this for? Teesh! Nolik? Really? How did you get in there? Surprise! Hmm. You were in the container, the container was in the chocolate ball, and the yep. ball... That's just impossible. Ah, he went and got you two to help. We helped a little. Hang on, Nolik. You promised not to touch the chocolate till morning. And you promised not to open the toy without me, right? Oh, my God! <laughs>